Be at rest in Christ. I welcome you to October Devotion for the year 2022. It's a thing of joy to have you join us again this month of October, the month of our blessed Mother Mary. This year, we shall be looking into something very unique. We shall be looking at Mary and the saints. We shall limit ourselves to that love, that devotion, that unique relationship these very beautiful saints of ours had with our Blessed Mother Mary. And so we shall not be taking the entirety of their lives, but rather that which made them all Marian saints. I enjoin you to join us every day and be richly blessed by God's grace and favors. On this very first day, we shall be reflecting on St. Bridget of Sweden. St. Bridget of Sweden was one of the most important mystics of the Middle Ages, causing her to be named one of the patron saints not only of Sweden but all of Europe. Among the many visions she recorded in her revelations is this remarkable description of the Blessed Virgin Mary and her glory as the Queen of Heaven. In this vision, St. Bridget sees Our Lady possessing seven lilies and seven precious stones in her heavenly crown, each one symbolizing something very unique, something of different quality and characteristics. Seven, of course, we know is the biblical number that symbolizes perfection, and our Blessed Mother Mary is the crown of God's creation, the apex of God's creation, the perfection of God's creation. St. Bridget saw the Mother of God, a Blessed Virgin Mary, the Queen of Heavens, wearing a priceless crown. Her beautiful shiny hair fell around her shoulders. The Virgin was wearing a brilliant golden tunic and a veil as blue as the sky. Bridget fell into contemplative ecstasy as if something internal had left her. Then all of a sudden, St. John the Baptist appeared and said to her, Listen closely, I'm about to tell you the meaning of all things. The crown means that the Blessed Virgin is the Queen and Lady and the Mother of the King of Angels. Her hair signifies that she is the purest of virgins, absolutely perfect. Her sky blue veil denotes that all worldly things are dead to her. Her golden tunic symbolizes that she has proved ardent love and charity both inwardly and outwardly. On the part of her lilies, the first symbolizes her humility, the second is her fear of God, the third is her obedience to God. The fourth is her patience. The fifth symbolizes her serenity. And the sixth, her sweetness. And the seventh, her mercy. On the other hand, for her precious stones, the first is her eminent virtue. The second is her perfect purity. The third is her beauty. The fourth is her wisdom. The fifth is her strength. The sixth is her sparkle and light, and the seventh is her fullness of every delight. In one of her encounters with our Blessed Mother Mary, Our Lady, the Queen of Heaven, said to St. Bridget, Hear now how much my son honored my name. My name is Mary, as it is said in the Gospel. When the angels hear this name, they rejoice in their mind and thank God for the great mercy that he walked through me and with me, and because they see my son's humanity glorified in his divinity. Those within the fire of purgatory rejoice exceedingly, just like a sick and bedridden man does if he receives a word of comfort that pleases his soul. He is suddenly overjoyed. When the good angels hear my name, they immediately move closer to the righteous for whom they are guidance and rejoice 
over their progress in good deeds and virtues. My dearest in Christ, child of God, sons and daughters of the Blessed Virgin Mary, do you cherish this name of Mary? How much do you value this name of the mother of our Lord Jesus Christ? Their rest in Christ, devotion to Our Lady of Sorrows, became a standard devotion in the church around the 14th century. It was revealed to St. Bridget of Sweden that devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary's seven sorrows would bring great signal graces. The devotion consists in praying seven Hail Marys while meditating on the seven sorrows of Mary. Mary, in a unique way, willingly suffered alongside her Divine Son as He gave His life to save the world. She felt the bitterness of His passion as an only mother can. This devotion especially remember during September, the month of Our Lady of Sorrows, the Feast of Our Lady, which is on September 15th, and also during the season of Lent. Beloved in Christ, why don't we take a look at the seven sorrows of our Blessed Mother Mary? The prophecy of Simeon was the first of her seven sorrows. The second is her flight into Egypt. The third of her sorrows is the loss of Jesus for three days. The fourth is the carrying of the cross. The fifth is the crucifixion of our Lord Jesus Christ. The sixth is when Jesus was taken down from the cross. And the seventh is when our Lord Jesus Christ was laid in the tomb. Child of God, Our Lady made seven promises to those who meditate on the seven sorrows of hers. The first of those promises that I will give peace to their families. The second is that they will be enlightened about the divine mysteries. The third is that I will console them in their pains and I will accompany them in their work. The fourth, I will give them as much as they ask as long as it does not oppose the adorable will of my divine, of my divine son or the sanctification of souls. And in the faith of the promises, I already said, I will defend them in their spiritual battles with the infernal enemy, and I will protect them at every instant of their lives. The sixth, she says, I will visibly help them at the moment of their death. They will see the face of their mother. And finally, on the seventh, she promised to obtain this grace from her Divine Son, the grace to those who propagate this devotion to my tears and dolors. They will be taken directly from this earthly life to eternal happiness, since all their sins will be forgiven my Divine Son. And she said that she will be their eternal consolation and joy. Dear rest in Christ, in honor of the seven sorrows, I would like us to say this prayer approved by Pope Pius VII. This is not the rosary of the seven sorrows of our Blessed Mother, but this is a prayer that was approved by the Pope, and I would like us to participate in it to obtain the graces therein as we meditate on this you. O God, come to my assistance. O Lord, make haste to help me. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, 
and ever shall be world without end. Amen. I grieve for you, O Mary, most sorrowful, in the affliction of your tender heart, at the prophecy of the holy and aged Simeon. Dear Mother, by your heart so afflicted, obtain for me the virtue of humility and the gift of the holy fear of God. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. I grieve for you, O Mary most sorrowful, in the anguish of your most affectionate heart, during the flight into Egypt and your sojourn there. Dear Mother, by your heart so troubled, obtain for me the virtue of generosity, especially towards the poor, and the gift of piety. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. I grieve for you, O, most, o Mary, most sorrowful, in those anxieties, which tried your troubled heart at the loss of your dear Jesus. Dear Mother, by your heart so full of anguish, obtain for me the virtue of chastity and the gift of knowledge. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. I grieve for you, O Mary most sorrowful, in the consternation of your heart at the meeting of Jesus as he carried his cross. Dear Mother, by your heart so troubled, obtain for me the virtue of patience and the gift of fortitude. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. I grieve for you, O Mary most sorrowful, in the martyrdom which your generous heart endured in standing near Jesus in his agony. Dear Mother, by your afflicted heart, obtain for me the virtue of temperance and the gift of counsel. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. I grieve for you, O Mary most sorrowful, in the wounding of your compassionate heart, when the side of Jesus was struck by the lance, before his body was removed from the cross. Dear Mother, by your heart thus transfixed, Obtain for me the virtue of fraternal charity and the gift of understanding. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. I grieve for you, O Mary most sorrowful, for the pangs that wrenched your most loving heart at the burial of Jesus. Dear Mother, by your heart sunk in the bitterness of desolation, obtain for me the virtue of diligence and the gift of wisdom. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Dearest in Christ, thank you for joining us this very first day of our devotion. I pray you make us time to join us every day as we reflect on Mary and the saints. Before the final blessings, I would like us also to pray the very sweet prayer of St. Bridget of Sweden to our blessed Mother Mary. Let us pray. Let intercession be made for us we beseech you O lord jesus christ now and at the hour of our death 
before the throne of your mercy, by the Blessed Virgin Mary, your mother, whose most holy soul was pierced by a sword of sorrow in the hour of your bitter passion. Through you, O Jesus Christ, Savior of the world, who with the Father and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you abundantly. See you again tomorrow.